Cyclists Riding for Awareness. To increase the awareness of um, cyclers in the community. Days after two tragic deaths in Miami. A slur on a sign. It was beyond racism. Has a handful of South Florida middle schoolers in hot water. And unable to find baby formula. I hate to say, I've lost a lot of sleep. Florida moms find strength in their community. These stories and more coming up on Newsbreak. Hello, South Florida. I'm Paloma Pimentel. And I'm Julian Davis. Today's Thursday, May 19th, 2022. Live from the South Florida Media Network's Biscayne Bay Studios in North Miami, this is SFMN Newsbreak. Sadness and silence, the annual silence ride on Key Biscayne taking on more urgency following the deaths of two cyclists. The ride was scheduled before the deaths of Ogniana Reyes and Yaldiz Vera. But as the network's Anya Joseph reports, Sunday's tragic deaths were on the front of everyone's mind. All cyclists are joined here tonight at the Crandon Park Marina for the Ride of Silence, raising awareness for cyclist safety, an event that could not happen any sooner. The 20th annual International Ride of Silence, held to raise cycling safety awareness and to honor riders who'd been killed or injured in crashes. Just three days shy of the fatal incident that occurred in Miami of the two cyclists who were killed on the Rickenbacker Causeway struck by a man driving a Jeep. So one of the things that we're going to be doing is we're going to be having a meeting with the stakeholders and the folks that use the bike lanes and we're going to be providing immediate barriers um, and protection and signage and then we're also going to be working on a long-term plan and one of the things that we focus on is asking folks to stay in the bike lane so now if they're not safe in the bike lane where are they safe? Though South Florida politicians are seeking a fix to save lives some cyclists show difference in opinion. Well they're going to put the they're going to put the barriers dividing the, the bike lane from the, from the cars, but I don't think that's going to do anything. Meanwhile, other riders were there just to show support. To increase the awareness of um, cyclers in the community. Given the support here and the new changes to potentially be implemented, bikers should expect a safer ride. I'm Anya Joseph, South Florida Media Network. The economic relationship the U.S. has with Cuba and Venezuela is changing, and as the network's Claudia Morales reports, it's a controversial issue here in South Florida. The lifting of restrictions towards the Cuban regime by the Biden administration has sparked controversy in the Cuban-American community. The State Department announced that these measures will include allowing commercial flights to go beyond Havana, removing the cap on how much money can be sent to the island, encouraging investments in Cuban private businesses, and reinstating the reunification parole program. I'm very disappointed in the current administration's uh, lifting of restrictions and, and, and hoping to uh, uh, create uh, for lack of a better word, uh, a normalization of, of, of relations with Cuba. Although the administration has emphasized that these changes aim to support the Cuban people, the news comes at a time when the regime has imposed a new penal code that could condemn Cubans to prison or even death penalty for speaking out against the government. Um, I think it would help the Cuban people um, because of their situation over there in Cuba, you know. Um, they're getting help from their people over here. Although I think that, you know, if they were free, everything else would be much, much better. Meanwhile, the Biden administration plans to reverse sanctions that will permit Chevron Corporation to operate in Venezuela. This will happen if conversations are held between President Nicolas Maduro and opposition leader Juan Guaido. On the other hand, the U.S. Embassy in Havana announced in its Twitter account that there is no immediate change in regards to consular services that provide immigrant visas. In Miami, Claudia Morales, South Florida Media Network. The voice of the woman who is calling out for help underneath the Surfside collapse last summer has been identified. Officials say 36-year-old Teresa Velazquez was the voice rescuers heard for several hours as they searched the rubble of the Champlain Towers. The crew was unable to reach her. She was visiting her parents, Julio Cesar and Angela Velazquez, when the building fell. The family along, among the 95 victims who died at the 12-story condo <coughs> collapse. 
Parents are furious after six middle school students in Martin County made an art project banner with a racial slur on it. It was first brought to the attention of the school district by the parent of a student at Hidden Oaks Middle School. After an investigation by the school board, it was confirmed to be authentic. Parents went to a county meeting where they voiced their disbelief and disgust for the racial behavior displayed. The Martin County School District says this goes against everything they stand for. School officials met with Jimmy Smith, the president of NAAA CP in Martin County, to discuss next steps. I'm very shocked that they can get that far without getting caught before him. I believe that all those kids need some kind of psychological uh, evaluation or some kind of help. The school board is promising a full investigation into the matter. This morning, new details unfold after fire near Central Florida Wawa gas pump injured three people. A police report on the February 27th fire was just released. Deputies tried to arrest 26-year-old Gene Beretta near Orlando shortly after he claimed they claimed he was riding with a group of motorcyclists pointing guns at nearby cars. According to the police report, the most probable cause of the fire was an electric discharge from the deputies deploying a department-issued taser device. The fire left the victim with severe burns. An elementary school child knows that you don't deploy electricity um, or anything that's got as flammable. The victim's attorney is calling for accountability and transparency from the Osceola officers. After years of fighting for equal pay, a new contract for U.S. National Team Soccer is ready. That's still ahead and so is his story. Your mind doesn't stop thinking about it, especially at night. Mothers Helping Mothers in Florida in the face of a baby formula shortage will be back in just two minutes. Type 2 diabetes can have a big impact on your life, but how can it be prevented? Well, the first step is knowing if you have something called prediabetes. Take the one-minute risk test today at doihaveprediabetes.org. I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. Through a nationwide network of food banks, Feeding America serves virtually every community in the United States. See how you can help your community. Visit feedingamerica.org. If a natural disaster shows up at your doorstep, you can't just turn it away. That's why it's important to prepare for emergencies before they show up. Go to ready.gov plan to find the tools and tips you need and make a plan today. You really have done as much for us as you think we've done for you. Thank you. Moms help moms in Florida as a formula shortage causes panic. In the midst of a baby formula shortage, some moms are turning to other moms for help feeding their babies, including a group near Tampa. Heather Nicholas, a mother of a five-year-old, five-month-old, was losing sleep over not finding any baby formula for her son. After turning to social media, she found a group of local breastfeeding mothers. Kaylee Ayers, mom to a five-month-old baby girl, offered her extra milk to Heather. I think I could tell that she was very um, stressed out um, trying to figure out how to feed her baby, so I could just see like the stress lift off of her. 
these aren't the only moms doing this, as Facebook is full of parents meeting up to share breast milk with each other, yet the American Academy of P Pediatrics doesn't recommend this, citing the quality and safety of milk cannot be guaranteed. Even so, Heather is grateful that her son has milk to drink. The U.S. women's soccer team is celebrating a historic equal pay deal for the men's and women's teams was put into effect. The plan was agreed to, agreed to by the U.S. Soccer Federation, the U.S. Women's National Team Players Association, and the U.S. National Soccer Team Players Association. Under this deal, U.S. soccer will be the first federation to equalize FIFA World Cup prize money. They will also guarantee a 50-50 split of its broadcast, sponsorship, and partner revenue between the men's and women's teams. U.S. Soccer President Cindy Parlow Cohn called this a truly historic moment. Well, that's all the time we have for Newsbreak. I'm Julian Davis. And I'm Paloma Pimentel. Get more news anytime at sfmn.fiu.edu.